it's Bathurst Friday and Will Brown's on Provisional Poll. Now, yesterday, I totally forgot to talk about our favourite topic, car liveries. Um, I even put uh, Thomas Randall's new livery in the thumbnail and totally forgot to talk about it. Um, but we have seen Thomas Randall's 2022 Castrol livery. Uh, no surprises that it will be a Castrol car. Some surprises the way it looks. Um, they could have talked to the Kellys about a ready-made Castrol livery that looks good on a Mustang. Uh, but I, I, I just don't understand. I, it's not bad, but it's... The, Kelly's Castrol Mustang looked amazing. This... It's just... I mean, could be kind of a, a Super 2 livery. Now, speaking of the Kellys, uh, they've got some new liveries for the weekend and I'm a little bit torn on these ones. Do they count as special one-off liveries? Meaning that they can't win the race. Uh, as we all know, a, a special one-off livery cannot win the race. Um, but I don't count the, you know, the, the tweaked kind of, um, you know, an extra sponsor on the car or something like that for Bathurst. That that doesn't count as a special one-off livery. Um, the, the obvious ones there are the, the, the Spider-Man Kmart car. Um, that was, you know, just a special um, came out promotion at the time and of course the um, the Dave Reynolds Penrite uh, Bathurst winner where they had uh, Napa Auto Parts on the car I think it was for that weekend that you know tweaked the livery an extra sponsor does you know Dave Reynolds Penrite one count as like a one-off livery considering it's pretty much just the, the normal one with blue added and the Jaime Ned Whiskey car, um, that's just a little bit of a tweak of the livery that we've had over, uh, I think since Sydney Motorsport Park, we've had that revised livery, so it's not really a special one-off livery, so I suppose under that, they can still win the race, but um, yeah, once we get into qualifying, I mean, yeah, they, they were, Dave seemed very confident in his interview before qualifying uh, that he was going to make the top 10 easy, and um, yeah, they, neither of those two really looked even close. The Gen 3 cars were released today, and wow, 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 wow. Um, yeah, they look really good. Uh, <laughs> it's funny, I got quite used to the way that the race Mustang looks like, and you're a bit like, ooh, that Mustang, you know, it looks a bit flat and wide and stuff. <laughs> but they they do look really like the, um, you know, the road cars from the guys driving them, so they definitely moved around a bit more. So, you know, that's a good thing. They weren't driving them in anger, though, so it will be. And I think they'll also start to look, because I know the Mustang at first, like Grand Tato Kate was a bit like, ah, ah, when we first saw it, um, the mutant stang as a lot of people call it um but it did to me when you saw it in that you know the ford performance kind of livery at the start it was like, um but what you know once you got it in the proper race colors uh all of a sudden the, the cars just looked a lot better uh so i imagine that we're going to have a, a similar thing with the um the the gen 3 cars um of course everyone once again, talking about paddle shift, how we don't want it, blah, blah, blah. Roland Dane saying he doesn't want um, bullshit, um, you know, fake kind of, um, you know, if, if there's the sticks there, you don't want the auto blip and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I'd much prefer it to go back to a H pattern and, um, yeah, no rev cuts on down changes and things like that. And if a driver buggers up, he blows the engine. Uh, fair enough. But um, to then turn around and... He says, I don't mind um, as to which way the category goes, uh, but you you and your driver seem to be the only ones who are, you know, kind of peddling this whole paddle shift kind of crap. So if you don't mind, why, why aren't we having a proper stick shift in it? Hell, uh, let's have the H pattern and be done with it. The other announcement today was we will see two boost 
Erebus cars next year. Uh, so I, I assume this means that the money has left Tickford um, and really kind of confirms why uh, they signed who they did for the fourth car next year because now they have to find money for James Courtney's car as well. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, that just makes sense. Um, and also the Boost cars for some reason look better on the uh, Commodore than what it ever did on the Mustang and their whole youth thing and whatever. Um, you know, maybe this might uh, change up the co-drivers a bit. Uh, will we see Will we see the um, Stanaway Murphy uh, wildcard or will maybe see Stanaway in a... Um, you know, in, in one of the main kind of cars. And um, my God, do those cars look quick. <laughs> Will Brown topped the qualifying session. Just, yeah. And just the, the joy on all of their faces over it. Uh, that was something special. Uh, Brody ended up in sixth. Um, Dick Johnson Racing had two cars in the top 10 as well. Anton second and Davison down in eighth. Uh, but those guys weren't looking super quick coming in. So um, both of them are in the top 10. Um, and Tickford, depending on how you count them, they had two or three cars uh, in the top 10. Um, the one missing out was Courtney, who was, uh, he was all the way down in 16th. Um, Waters, uh, kind of a little bit of a disappointment there in fifth, but you know, um, he's in the 10, that's all that counts. The big, big, big disappointment of the session, uh, Jamie Winkup, um, 11th, it's not bad, but yeah, I fully expected, you know, um, and SVG was only in seventh, so I, may, maybe they've focused too much maybe on the race setup maybe come the end of Sunday if they you know finish the race in one two um that kind of you know maybe it's not so much it's a good thing that you focused on the um race setup if you finish one two uh but yeah a, a little bit surprising how far down they were considering you know we fully expected them to probably you know be first and second in qualifying um Mostert was in third Slade in fourth uh we covered those guys um uh Percat in the top 10 and uh yeah LeBrock in the top 10 that looked quite good um Feeney was in 15th and Russell Ingle actually put in some competitive times uh, in his session, so they're looking quite good. Um, yeah, the, the Kelly guys were kind of nowhere. The usual, you know, Team 18 didn't really qualify good. Um, MSR, the rest of Brad Jones's, uh, Matt Stone Racing, you know, all down the back. Techno... Uh, Coulthard actually got in 20th, which is pretty good. Uh, Jacobson was last and uh, finished the session in the gravel trap. So, <laughs> um, big day tomorrow, top 10 shootout. Uh, that's the well, easily the most exciting qualifying session of the year. And um, yeah, def definitely one not to miss. Um, who knows which way pole will go now? I fully expected it to be pretty much a shootout between Anton and the two triple eight guys. Um, and all of a sudden the Walkinshaw, uh, forward actually, he ended up 12th in qualifying the Walkinshaw cars, the Erebus cars and the Tickford cars all looked really good all day. Um, yeah. And the, the DJR and triple eight, it's hard to tell where they just worrying about race runs, but, they just, they didn't look quite as good, but then also who's going for Hollywood times. I think the practice session tomorrow will probably give us a bit more of an idea. Um, obviously, you know, Wink Up and Lounge can just go out and focus on race runs. They don't even have to worry about, uh, you know, top 10 shootout run, which uh, the, you know, the, the top 10 are obviously, they're gonna spend probably the last 10 minutes of the session just making sure that their head's in the right spot for that top 10 shootout. Uh, but yeah, tomorrow will be definitely interesting. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> watch it. Um, that's all I can say about that. Uh, so until tomorrow, I'm still Dave and I'll catch you later. <laughs>